Hey guys, I'm back with a look at the Microsoft Digital Media Keyboard 3000. Um, I bought this keyboard to replace this wireless Microsoft keyboard, um, which works not too bad. My big complaint with this is the range really sucks. That and the fact that, I don't know if you can see it, oops, I'll just undo the cord a little bit. It's got this monster receiver, which is really hard to hide on a desk and kind of defeats the purpose of the uh, wireless keyboard. Not only that, but the range of this thing is so bad that I had to basically keep this within about a foot of the keyboard. So essentially I was keeping this on the desk. So I thought I might as well go with a wired keyboard um, and just avoid the whole wireless problem altogether. I'm going to be using this on my standing desk, um, much along with my mini ITX build that I built in one of my other videos. So I'm going to go ahead and open that uh, this box up and have a quick look at the keyboard. I guess the first thing we should do is check out the box. There's the front of the box. Microsoft Digital Media Keyboard 3000. Easy Media Access. Designed to fit your digital lifestyle, whatever that means. There's the side of the box. And the back. Media Center, easily control your media activities, don't care. Hotkeys, one touch to access key features. Eh. Zoom, zoom, in, uh, zoom in and out of images. My favorites, hotkeys. And enhanced function keys, quickly perform common commands. Windows flip 3D key. So basically it's rotating through all the open windows, much like alt tabbing by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, not too exciting. Again, uh, I got this for a really good price. I think it was 12 bucks, and I was already ordering some other stuff, so I went ahead and ordered this along with it, so the shipping cost me nothing extra, so it was a good deal. So let's go ahead and crack open this box. and open it up and see what's in the packaging. On the top of the box we've got Microsoft Wired Keyboard. Install the software then connect the keyboard. Pretty straightforward. IntelliType Pro 7.1 for Windows and Mac. And then a little Microsoft product guide that looks pretty generic. And there's the keyboard itself. It's wrapped up in some clear plastic, well, semi translucent plastic. Go ahead and crack that open. Uh, one thing I liked about this keyboard, uh, which I also liked about my wireless one, it had these um, low, I don't know what you call them, low travel keys, very laptop like, as opposed to the full height keys. Um, I've gotten used to these now, and it's hard to hard to switch back to full travel keys. So let's have a little closer look at the keyboard. Along this side, we've got zoom in, zoom out buttons. I'm not sure what. Looks like context menu and camera button. Mail, home, contacts probably. Um, music. Some custom function keys by the looks of it. Um, uh, media playback controls, volume and mute, and then these custom function keys. I'm not sure what, quite what I think of those. We'll have to see how we, how those work out. Um, we've got what F1 is help, forward and back by the looks of it, open, close, so on and so forth. Mail, spell check, save, print, uh, function key lock. So I don't know if that locks between the function key and the uh, alternate um, uh, functionality of that key. Uh, 
print screen, scroll lock, pause, standard layout here, standard layout here by the looks of it, full size shift and enter keys, uh, arrow keys, a little calculator key, let's move this little strip of plastic, covering up the lights, there we go, I'll just go across and let you see the thing nice and close up. There we go, let's have a look at the back of the keyboard. It does have flip up feet, which I like to see. A little more angle on the keyboard. Giant health warning about repetitive stress probably. Yep. And a standard Microsoft uh, label. Put the feet down for a minute. I'm going to unwrap the cord. Couple of what our twist ties on there. And that's this warning. Install software first. Not gonna happen. And let's just undo the cord and see how long it is. Looks like about a six foot cord. I'll just hold it up by me quick and see. And it looks like it's a little longer than six feet, six and a half or so, I would say. And you this box. And then get rid of the rest of this packaging. Put it away. And there's the keyboard. wire could be a little softer, it's quite stiff. That I don't really care for. Seems like I have to do a little bending to make it stay where I want it to stay on the desk. And I'm just going to flip the feet up because I prefer my keyboards at a bit more of an angle. Like that. Feels basically the same. The keys feel uh, essentially the same as my uh, wireless Microsoft, which if you happen to have one, was the Wireless Keyboard 2000. Just so you can compare the two. Um, travel feels about the same. Perhaps a little more travel on the new keyboard, on the uh, Digital Media Keyboard 3000. I think there's a little more travel on these keys. I'm not sure what I think of these function keys yet. I'll have to see the travel on these is a lot less than the regular keys, and they're, a little, they're actually quite a bit smaller. They don't feel too bad, a little plasticky, even the whole keyboard is a little plasticky. You can see it flexes slightly if I twist it. But again, when it's sitting on the desk, it feels actually quite solid. It's a little rubber feet at the front of the keyboard here. They keep it from sliding around, seem, seem quite stable. Of course, this desk isn't very slippery because it's just uh, raw maple, so it's quite grippy. Uh, so maybe I'll go ahead and uh, plug it in and see what I think of it. All right, so I've got the keyboard plugged in. Uh, I just plugged it into the front of the, of the system for now just to give it a, a rundown. Um, I'm just going to try out a few of the functions and see how it all works. Uh, let's start along the left. Email. It seems to automatically take you to Windows Live, even though I'm not using Windows Live. I'm sure we can assign that to something else. Home key opens Firefox, takes me to the home page right where it should. Messenger. Uh, Windows Media Player, that's what the little headphone icon defaults to. I think these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 keys here. Um, take you directly to a web page. I'm sure we can sign those in the software. Uh, these are your favorites keys and you can then assign them right here. There you go. What do you want my favorites keys to do? One, two, three, four, five, and the star key. 
and you can assign whatever you want to open specific web pages, files, or folders. So you can assign whatever you want to do to it. Uh, for instance, if we just assign uh, Google to the first key, I think we will go to Google by default. So that's pretty slick and quite easy to use. Easy to, to change what you want to open with it. Uh, if we assign the second key to, I'm not even sure what we would assign that to. How about a, a uh, some program? Um, how about the Auto Disk Benchmark? Okay, let's close that. And so now if I hit two, brings up this benchmark. So that I like a lot. The quick quick launch is handy. Easy to assign keys apparently. Uh, media playback, so if we go ahead and start up Windows Media Center, or Windows Media Player, sorry. Um, I don't have anything on here for music right now. I imagine the transport keys work as they should. Volume keys bring up the volume control in the bottom right. All the way up, all the way down, that works pretty slick. And mute works nicely, that I like. Um, the zoom in, zoom out keys along the left work quite well. I like that as well. Feel the keys is quite nice. I'll just go back to Notepad. They're quite soft. A little spongy, but similar to these membrane keyboards. Um, very similar to my uh, the wireless keyboard 2000 that I was using. Um, overall, I don't know, for $11, I think it's a pretty good buy. A little flexible, but on the desk, it's quite solid. Um, I think it'll, it'll work fine for this system. Nice long cord so I can get out of the way when I want to you know, shoot a product video or something like that. And uh, other than that, I don't have to worry about the wireless uh, range issues that I was having with my wireless keyboard 2000. So, um, overall, uh, if you can get a good deal on it, I'd recommend it. I think the list price on this was $30 or something. I don't know if for $30 I would go for it. But for what I paid, it was definitely a good buy. And I purchased it again. Alright guys, thanks for watching.